Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And last week, well we had quite a good stream I think, I got some stuff finished off. Um, and I say finished off in a sort of, well I'm probably going to have to come back here at some point and, uh, and finish it off again. But for the time being it seems to be going pretty well. So yes, this is Taisha Kuten, which is my, um, my Vulcanite moon. And if we have a look at the... Uh, if we have a look at the map, we can see that it's, it's this is the moon that's fairly close to uh, to Norvis. So it's relatively easy to get here. As as I I mentioned in a previous video, I hopped over here with the um, with the capsule rather than flying a proper rocket out here. But this is a nice place to go because it's got vulcanite, but it also has water. It's not it's not a waterless planet. It's got puddles. It's got this lake down here. So that means that generating power on it is actually manageable. And so, um, let's try and actually open. And so I've been I've been out here mining vulcanite, and the way I've done this is I've put down core mining drills on every single core mining patch around the planet. And there's there's I think there was ten of them, uh, which is a decent number. And then I've got all of those being brought in by belt, all, all the cores from those being brought in by belt. And my original plan was to do all of this by uh, train, but then I discovered I hadn't brought enough railway out with me. Um, so I thought right, well I'll just get things started. I'll put down I'll put down these belts to get all of that done. And it turns out, the belts, as you can see, by the way, this, this is sort of the very, very bottom, where, where all of it comes together. You can see that none of these belt sides are actually full, so we are getting 100% of, um, of the core fragments that are being dug up coming through at the moment. And as time goes by, as we do more processing, we will eventually get more and more of the, um, the, the mining productivity researches. Is this one of them? That's the big mining drill. There are various mining productivity researches that we'll do as we go through. Here we go. Here's number four. So we've done number three over here, and that gets us up to that. Get that got us an additional um, ten percent productivity. And as we go through, we'll get this one, which eventually we'll get this one, which gets us another ten percent, and so on and so on. So presumably it's ten percent per level. But as you can see, looking at the science packs along the sides of here, it gets going to get more and more expensive the further we go through. So with more and more expensive science packs, and probably yes, larger and larger numbers of those science packs as well. Look, that's twenty-six thousand bioscience four. That's crazy amounts of science, um, but yes, it's going to be. We're going to be boosting and boosting and boosting the, the the effectiveness of this, and so these belts will get a bit fuller. And so at some point, I might have to come out here and do do some upgrades. But for now, the system is working quite nicely. I've now split it, split it out. So instead of having just the one bank of um, of pulverizers, I've got one going out either side of it like this, and it's. Um, I've got productivity modules in all of the pulverizers, at least all of the pulverizers that are being used. I did run out, so some of the ones up at the end here don't have them. But as you can see by that sort of weird effect in the um, in the belt there, I've got one of the pieces of belt going the other way. And this is because that can easily be rotated remotely. And this means that, uh, but basically this means that it's stopping the um, it's stopping the, the core fragments going anywhere beyond where the productivity modules are. So I'm always getting that extra 24% out of all of this. So we're getting an extra quarter for free, which is rather nice. I say for free, it's a load of electri extra electricity and a load of extra machines along here. But then those are, as you as you probably imagine, those are feeding down down belts here where we're pulling out the um, the actual core fragments at sort of the vanilla core fragments as opposed to the vulcanite ones and the stone chunks and sending them off to be dealt with elsewhere. And as I touched on last time, we're processing through the through the vulcanite here, crushing it down, enriching it along here, and then cooking it down here into the actual vulcanite cubes. Now I've done some sort of I feel like I've done some slightly funny business with the way all of this works. Now I was talking about this last week as well, so I'll, I'll go over it very, very quickly here. But at the moment, this is basically watching for a, for a low, low quantities of the enriched vulcanite here. And if so, then these belts run, and it passes out here so it can enrich more of it up. And then down here, it's watching for low quantities of both of them. And if either of them is low, then it won't be passed out this way. The idea is that down here, we won't run these systems unless there's enough resource for them to run happily and not risk running out. And then over here, we'll only run these when there's plenty, when, the, when there's insufficient of the, um, of the enriched. So it keeps it quite nicely balanced. Now, this system does lead to a fairly silly looking productivity graph. So if I search for vulcanite, uh, then we haven't made any recently, so we'll zoom back out an hour a bit. There we go. So if I look at uh, if I look at over the last hour, you can see I've been making an average of 214 a minute, which is okay, I suppose. It's not as many as Mark wants for his uh, smelting magic, but it's it's still it's um it it it's several. Um, but as you can see, it's going up and down, up and down, up and down. And this is because essentially the the crushers produce a, a fixed amount of um, crushed vulcanite. So as you can see, that's more or less static. It's close close enough, um, and that it's sort of and the system is basically alternating between whether that goes to enrichment or to uh, making blocks. So it alternates back and forth between the two, and that's why we're getting this weird um, spiky pattern along here. Now it it looks a little bit silly. I'll grant you that. 
but i don't think it actually matters because the overall throughput is the same as it would be otherwise because all of the crushed vulcanite is getting eventually transferred turned into um in, into the vulcanite blocks but some of it has to be enriched first now yes i could balance the system perfectly so the enrichment machines are always running and the um and the vulcanite cube machines are always running and both of these lines would be flat but the averages would be exactly the same so Technically, this is more machines than I actually need. If I remove some of these, then maybe it would run a bit more evenly and smoothly. <clears throat> but I actually don't care. As it is, it runs absolutely fine. It's uh, We're getting the same amount of everything out as we would if we didn't, didn't have this um, silly system in. And So, uh, yeah, as I say, I just don't care. Once that's then been cooked up, it's then sent along this belt here, passed down here, and down to the uh, delivery cannons. And we've got two delivery cannons down here, one firing at Norvis and one firing at Norbit. And these two will send, send off the uh, Vulcanite blocks to wherever it's needed to be dealt with, to be uh, then used on the planets. And all of this Vulcanite is basically getting turned into Pyroflux for Mark's new smelting system that I showed you briefly at the, in, in, last, in the last video. And we'll show you again in tomorrow's video. But the idea is that we're turning the, uh, turning the Vulcanite into Pyroflux so that we can then deal with the iron a bit more, a bit more efficiently by melting it down and turning it into ingots, which gets us an extra, I don't know, 25% or something. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but it does add up. So yes, that's using a lot of these um, delivery cannon capsules. And as you can see over here, though, we are actually producing them slightly faster than we're using them up. So these belts have both now backed up completely, and we've got them slowly growing up here. So this system is, is working. And the way this works, again, in case you weren't watching last week's video closely enough, is that all of the vulcanite processing, when it produces the, um, all of this crushing of the, of the vulcanite core fragments, produces the grey core fragments, which are then passed down this belt over here, into this system, which is then pulverising them, and turning them into all of the, um, the bits and pieces you need in order to make delivery cannon capsules. And the delivery cannon capsules are then being passed out down here to be, to be used by the cannons, as you saw. Maybe it's not quite as much faster as I thought it was, because this doesn't... I don't know. It's it's more or less keeping up. The belts seem to be back... There are, the belts were not backed up this far when I when I finished making it. And the fact that then, look, this one's backed up to here and then this one up to here means that I think we must be making them slightly faster than we're using them. But it's pretty close. <clears throat> and part of the reason it's a bit close is because I've been chucking all of the stone that I've been... Picking up, picking up as part of the um, production production of all of this. I've been throwing it in this warehouse here, and so this warehouse has now got well, it's got a lot of stuff in it, a lot of its stone, a lot of its sand, and this means and, and the stone is getting gradually pulverised by this machine, putting back into here in the form of sand. It's, it's being pulled out and put back in again, and that sand is then being cooked into glass, which is also using up a bit of the pyroflux. It's not using it up quite as quickly as it's made, but never mind. I do have an emergency dump for that. And the idea is that this is then being turned, turned into, turning, turning this into glass, and then sending the glass off by delivery cannons to Norbis, where it then gets used for all of the things you use glass for. And the, the whole point of this is it's just to use up all of the stone and the sand that's produced in all of this, all of these processing steps. So we've got stone coming out of the of this pulverizing stage, stone coming out of this one, I suspect. Yep, there's some stone. I think there's sand coming. Yeah, there's sand coming out from, from here. Uh, where's this coming from? Oh yes, sand is coming out from this step and going out down this way instead of sort of in, in replacing the sulfur that's going in. So, as you can see, we're getting a lot of a lot of this coming through here. It, it's just get, it's just producing lots and lots of sand, which we can all dump into here and then eventually and gradually turn into glass. And I believe the amount of, the amount of total in there the total in there is gradually going down. I believe the um, when we when the once that once that four thousand stone has all been turned into sand, we'll then be able to come back and have a look at this number and make sure that that forty thousand is going down. It's not at the moment because the stone is replenishing it faster than it's being used up. But once the stone all gets used, once the massive dump of stone that I put into here all gets used up, then we should find that we start to get rid get through the sand, get through the sand. And I think that's going down. Yeah, that the, I'm pretty sure that's going down. Um, yeah, it is. You can see it's spiking up and down a little bit, but mostly it's going downwards, and, 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 and the sand is going up. We're creating more and more piles of sand. So, at the moment, yeah, it is not particularly tidy. In fact, let's sort this warehouse. There we go. Um, so, the sand over here is... I mean, that looks fairly static. Maybe going down ever so slightly. Yeah, I think that might actually be going down. And if we look up here at the stone, the stone is definitely going down. Because um, there was another, there was another 50 in there a moment ago. Yes, yeah, so this is definitely going. So we are, we are getting through these resources now. The the, the only other thing is that we do have this um, uranium in here, and that is um, that that's gradually going up. So eventually, 
Oh no, I take it back. This, actually, this, this sand is going up. Eventually, this this will end up full of uranium, and probably I think this coal is eventually going to overflow, and we're going to start getting coal flowing out here as well, and that's just going to go into this warehouse because I haven't done anything clever with that. So there are a few things that are eventually going to overflow a little bit, but uh, it's going to be quite a long time before this actually requires maintenance. So I think I'm happy to mostly ignore it for now. So this system here pulverizes down the core fragments and produces all of the basic materials from it and they're all going into this chest we're turning the we're turning the iron into into steel for the delivery cannons we're turning the copper into copper plates and copper wires and so on and, and acids and explosives and all all the things that are needed to make the make the delivery cannons but there is a bit of an overflow of iron which we see every so often so that over here we've got it set up so that any excess that gets accumulated that comes into here which is rare the rare metals are excess and various other things as well will get dumped out onto this belt so this is the overflow where they get chucked down here and originally I had the um, the rare metals going into this in, into this warehouse here where they were then being fired off by delivery cannon back to Norvis. That's no longer the case because the next thing I'm going to talk about has created a bit of a demand on the raw metals. The iron is kind of the same. So when we do get an iron ore overflow, which doesn't happen constantly, but sometimes sometimes it can. That will come down here. It'll go round. It'll come off here. And this 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 is inserted. This this splitter is probably in the wrong place. But it makes for quite a nice emergency overflow because I could always use it to, to dispatch it out to, again out to Norvis using this system if I wanted to. But this then runs across here where it goes into this warehouse where we've got quite a lot of iron ore, and that's joining the um, the, the rare metals and being taken away up up north for for the uh, for the thing that I'm now going to talk about. So the other thing this planet has is, a, is some immersite um, veins or caves or whatever they're called. And using the quarry drills, you can dig that. You can dig that immersite up, and then I'm passing that out along this belt over here. And at the moment, I'm not using it as fast as I would like to because the third extra ingredient that the immersite requires is um, is the mineral water, and we're not producing that particularly quickly through these uh, core frag through these core pulverizers over here. They are producing a quantity of mineral water but as you can see it's, it's it's not really enough it's dribbling out into these pipes and then that is also being taken and I have no idea where the pipes for this are maybe it's this I have no idea where the pipe for that is but it goes goes up here somewhere somewhere somehow and it goes in up here um, so we're using that up faster than it's being made at the moment I do have an emergency overflow somewhere uh, for, for it but I don't think it's ever going to be needed but yes, immersite. Immersite is a complicated one, and is ne is it's another new material in. It's either 0.6 or Crastorio 2. I'm not. It looks like it looks like a K2 mod here. Uh, uh, looking at the um, the drill stuff over there, rather than a uh, space exploration 0.6. But this is an extra thing that's needed for a lot of the advanced machinery. So yeah, that makes sense for it to be a K2 thing. Uh, so for faster belts, for better assembly machines, all that sort of shenaniganery, you need you need fairly significant quantities of immersite. So I'm pulling all these crystals out here, pulverizing it down into dust, which produces sand, and that's passed off into the usual sand disposal system that I was showing you earlier. Uh, then it's brought over here, we're making that into um, this liquid immersite, what's called immersium sulfide, sulfide uh, which also requires sulfuric acid, that's where the sulfur part of it comes from. Then it's... Um, then it's deliquefied again in the presence of nitric acid uh, into the into the fine immersite powder and nitrogen. And now this is this is the uh, where I needed the uh, mineral water because up here, um, skipping back and forth a little bit here, we've got some nitrogen being pulled out of the air here, um, hydrogen and oxygen, and we're getting rid of the oxygen nitrogen. So we've got nitrogen and hydrogen going in here, being made into the ammonia, which is then used with the raw rare metals and the mineral water apparently. Um, comment in if you're a chemist and you know how this works. But that's making nitric acid. I think we reckoned it might be electrolyzing it and using funny rare metals as um, electrodes I but who knows um, that's yes yeah, so the nitric acid is then being brought around here for the this step up here and this was com kind of complicated to build because most of the time when you have a setup like this yes okay there's there's vents on all four sides of the mach of the um, of the machine but normally I get I, I feel like you can you get um, them sort of spread out a bit more nicely so Ideally, I'd want to would wanted one of the nitric acid ones to be here, and the Im immersium sulfide here, because then I could put the machines. Um, I, I, I could have had all the piping running up the back of the machines, rather than having to dip between them like this, which is a little bit messy. But it does work, so I'm not going to complain too hard about it. 
So this is, as you can see, limited by the nitric acid, and that nitric acid is limited by the mineral water. So that is the, that's the current problem with this system. But it is producing the, the powdery stuff, which is then coming around here um, and being mixed with silicon, which I'm making from the sand that came out of an earlier step of the process. Uh, we've, we've gone through this down on Norvis, but basically you um, filter, filter sand to get quartz, and then you cook quartz to get silicon. So we, we, we understand that process. And that's brought over here, and that allows us to make the um, imosite crystals, and this also produces sulfur as a byproduct as well. But however, we are splitting the powders over here. We're bringing oh, that's the sand coming out. Sorry, we're splitting the powder here, passing it underground and round to here, where we're also making imosite plates, and that doesn't require the acid. No, sorry, it does require the acid. The acid is required over here. That. Um, Apparently is just a faster process, so this, this is being done a bit more quickly. We're getting the emosite plates and more sulphur coming out here. Those are then merged onto a single belt here. We're bringing out, pulling out the sulphur. And the sulphur then... <laughs> so this is getting a little bit ridiculous. But uh, the sulphur is a convenient byproduct that we can then turn the sulphur around here back into sulfuric acid for this step. However, it's a net positive on the amount of sulphur you get. So I'm also... also belt side balancing here to make sure it doesn't jam but then chucking all of this sulfur down 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 all the way down here where it gets taken away down here to be made into to be used as part of the vulcanite processing so this does produce some of the sulfur we need um looking at this belt i mean this belt makes it look like quite a lot of it's coming from here and it is it is we are using the sulfur faster than we're producing it in the emissite processing. Um, there is a backlog, a load of it buffered on the other side of this belt. That's kind of fine though, because I mean, because of the belt balancing I've got going on here, it just means that all of the sulfur that comes down here is being put onto this side of the belt. So at the moment, with the level of throughput we've got here, this is actually okay. It doesn't matter that we're sort of only sending it down one side and it's jammed all the way up here. That's okay. We don't need to worry about that. It'll, it, it, it's fine. So, is that doing it? Yes, yeah, so this is producing imosite plate and imosite crystals. Those are being fed down a long belt, and I did quite a bit of spaghetti when I was making this. But this just punches basically through the middle of here, because I wanted to get it down to the delivery cannons. And so I've extended the belt down this way a little bit for the delivery cannon capsules. And we've now got, we've now got systems firing immersium, no, uh, yes, imosite, imosite crystals and imosite plates down to, um, down to Norvis. And it looks like we've got to the point where we've got enough plates down there, but we haven't got enough crystals yet. So the crystals are the, currently the, the in, in, in higher demand, whether we're actually using them or that we're just filling a belt up, I wouldn't like to say. But we are using those up in a... Those are being taken away in larger quantities, and as you can see, they're being dropped into this chest here. The uh, these are being dropped into a chest here, and those are—I don't really know. They're probably both going onto the onto the bus system down on Norvis, but it sort of doesn't matter. We'll uh, worry about this later because we'll um, once we start to actually use it. This probably isn't actually going to be enough imosite to keep the base to keep the systems happy. However, uh, in, at least in the future, once we start using it properly. But because I was on this planet anyway, and I got the basic infrastructure set up for the um, for the for the capsules and for all of that sort of nonsense, I thought, well, why not? Why not just set this up here? It wasn't a particularly big job. Might as well get that being shipped out, and then we've got enough to sort of to make a little bit of a start on stuff that uses these products, um, rather than necessarily getting it running at a high speed, we can at least start to produce a bit of it, start to get things running, and maybe make at least make proof of concept. And if there's something where we need we need sort of ten faster belts for something, or a couple of faster machines for some strange reason, rather than needing an enormous number of it, then it could be quite useful for that. So, and, and for experimentation, science purposes, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's nice to have little bits of all of these things. So I thought, worth setting up a small a small system that will just will just get 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 this basically working is as sort of a, a, a yeah a proof of concept is probably a good, good way of looking at it. And as you can see, yes, the, uh, the the delivery cannon capsules are very slowly backing up along here. So yes, those are basically basically the two things I've done in the last stream was improve the vulcanite processing and improve the uh, and set up imosite processing. Um, that took me the whole stream and has been summoned some summoned summarized in about one sentence. Uh, and 20 minutes of waffling about other things as well. <laughs> um, is there anything else around here to talk about? Um, yes, I think it's worth mentioning that if this system here ever backs up with delivery cannon capsules all the way to here, then it will start. To, then we've got another uh, splitter up here, which is filtering them out by priority to go along this way. But if we ever have too many of them, then the excess can go down here, round here, and down to this cannon, which, as you can see, is set up to send. Um, core fragments and we're watching this belt here and passing the signal all the way up here up here up here up here 
to the point where if we ever get to the, if we ever get to the point where the delivery cannon capsules are backed up all the way to here uh, and that's a lot of backup <clears throat> the, then actually no that'll never happen so if they if they back all the way up into here so they we stop being able to produce them <coughs> and the entire um, delivery cannon system up here stops working then we'll have a potentially have an overflow of core fragments to go down here the other way and at that point this will if we at that point this will be allowed to flow because we'll have the delivery cannon capsules all the way up here and this is only set like that because just in case there's some sort of funny business happens I don't want to waste a load of core fragments but then that'll allow the core fragments to pour down here into this into this cannon here and that will allow us to get through a dozen maybe uh, delivery cannon capsules so this system can kick in and start working again so we don't get the whole thing backing up all the way back here and preventing the uh, the vulcanite from blowing because that that sort of deadlock would, could could potentially be a problem I don't think we're going to get that but it's uh, or no, sorry, I rephrase that. I don't think we're going to get that for a long time, but eventually these can delivery cannon capsules will back up all the way up here, and that'll start to cause problems. So I thought best to put in some sort of pre um, preemptive fix for that rather than just wait for it to break. I did also run around and fix most of the things that I'd spotted in the last video, where the where I was saying, oh, this won't work, that won't work. Um, so let's have a look. The uh, oh yes, I I, I fixed it. I finished off the, um, the the power system down here so all of these now have all of the um, all of the modules all the bells all of the everything they need I even tried to build up some, a couple of extra ones out of the spare parts I had but it turned out I didn't have enough spare parts if basically I didn't have the belts I needed to build all of this so that's just got kind of abandoned um, over here what do we what do we have actually could I do a I've got uh, I've got no I've got 10 fast belts and that's it so I did deliberately leave some stuff behind here in case I needed to do some emergency repairs or anything like that. But there weren't. I'd, I basically run out of belts. I was really starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel with all of this. So maybe I should have made a load more um, simple ones from the from from all of this iron ore I've got. But I didn't. So um, tough, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, however, back on Norvis, we have set up another rocket launch silo here and put a, um, a constant combinator with it. And this is the, this is the sort of thing, these are the things that are wanted over on Taishikuten in order to get things up and improved and get things working nicely or to just, um, in fact, let's, let's, that, sh that should probably be increased. Let's make that a thousand um, because I didn't take into account all of the um, uh, all of the power stuff and in fact I should look at this as well because there's a load of extra stuff in there that's needed so I should get yes I should make sure that all gets um, all gets taken over for in, in the next in the next launch um, but this is as you can see it says Taishikuten underneath it because this is the uh, the rocket silo that will take a rocket to Taishikuten as and when required we don't expect to be launching a lot of these out there but when we realize that there's something else we need out there we can do that and the reason that these mineral water pump jacks out there in there is because I made a bit of a silly mistake. Um, so as I was saying earlier, the limiting factor on how fast we can produce imacite is the mineral water coming up here. So there's no point in putting in more machines or anything. It is literally this mineral water supply that is the limiting factor on absolutely everything. Now actually I could put some modules in here. Maybe I should, I should fill this up with productivity modules and that would help quite a lot. Uh, but I don't Ooh, actually, I might be able to do that. Yeah, let's do that next time. That'd be quite a nice idea. But I realised just after I'd left that there's actually a big patch of mineral water veins just over here that I could have tapped into and started pumping that over here and putting it in here, into this machine. And then we'd have had loads of supply there and we could have made this system run probably at least twice as fast, maybe slightly more than that. Certainly, it'd be, it would have been much, much better. So I'm a bit annoyed I didn't think of that, but... Unfortunately, it's a bit too, it was too late by the time I left. I didn't have any of the pumps with me, but I had a look through what, they, what it actually requires to make them. Um, that's these ones. And to be honest, none of that's particularly hard, especially as I've already got steel being made for the uh, delivery cannon capsules. Pipes I had plenty of, and automation cores are just iron and copper. So, And there's copper here. There's, there's, there's loads of all of that around. So if I'd been a, if I'd thought of it a little bit sooner, I'd have, I'd have thrown some of those together and got to supply it. But I didn't didn't think of it, and now I feel a little bit silly. But if I ever come back here, or if we launch a rocket out here, then maybe we can do it remotely by um, uh, by RoboPort because the, the robots have quite a long range. I'd, I'd need to put I'd need to put in another RoboPort, but that's manageable. It's all stuff that can be done if you have the foresight and think about it all in time and just you know get everything up and running rather than forgetting about it. Which is, so I felt a little bit silly there. I did have an idea about redesigning the enrichment down here and having chests or something down on the outputs of these, all of these um, 
centrifuges so that they don't pass their um so, because each of these they take in and they give out the crushed vulcanite and the enriched vulcanite so if i had that loop immediately back round again back into them then we wouldn't need to have as much stuff flowing down the belts to go into them and so it would run a little bit more quickly and efficiently but then i decided but i so i was well i was going to fit that in as, as i sometimes do with um with, with um uh, Coverex systems where so you have something like an, an output like this going into a uh, going into a box um, actually probably more like that uh, something like this basically and then you have a programmed inserter here that says to only take it out and put it onto the output belt when there's more than a certain amount in there. And so it would never. And so it would, this would only ever take. A, oh, I do have a few of these things. Never mind. Um, this would only take out the enriched vulcanite, and it would only take it out when there was more than say 20 in the box. And so that would mean that a lot of it would get cached in here, and it would just go round and round and round and round and round, rather than clogging up this belt and this belt. More importantly the uh, crushed vulcanite the four that comes out will go immediately go back in again so rather than having to bring 10 down along this belt to go in you'd only have to bring six along and that would almost double the number of these machines that i'd be able to run off it which would probably mean that i would then be absolutely fine with just this single half belt going along here rather than needing to top it up with this yellow one um in the end though i just decided that didn't actually matter at all because this system is fast enough to keep up with the rate that the uh, the crushed vulcanite is coming in so if it ain't broke, what's the point of fixing it? Basically, so I did. So I didn't, but didn't bother with any of that. Decided that was completely unnecessary, and just left it well alone. I put speed modules in the furnaces down here just to get those producing a bit more quickly. Because as as you see, we've got a lot of sand in here. So it's gone up to forty-four thousand sand now in the time I've been talking. Uh, granted, the stone's gone down though. So as I say, I reckon the overall total um, of material is is decreasing. But we'll have to keep an eye on that just to make sure. Um, but yeah, I sped those up because that seemed like a good idea put in warehouses for all of the buffers because of course I did that's just good planning and I just felt a bit silly for not having done that earlier and I put in a control system down here so we're not passing so we're not passing the because at this at the time when I was setting this up a lot of the um, the delivery cannon capsules were going down this way to be passed over to the um, rare metals cannon uh, and that didn't really need so I put in this link here where again we're reading the uh, belt here and we're going okay if there's any if there's any delivery cannons there then this belt should stop as it has as you can see that's completely stopped because there are some delivery cannons there uh, delivery cannon capsules there but the idea of this is that once if this if this test does start firing because we've got too much uh, raw, raw rare metal too much rare, rare metal in here which obviously hasn't happened yet but if it did, if it did ever happen we could start the cannon firing um, so it would use those up and then we get some more pass through and so on but that hasn't been hasn't been an issue and I don't expect it to be uh, at least not until the um, the immersion mines run out <laughs> I fixed the uh, meteorite don't this is this is this is actually a concern whereas the meteorite defense down here so we've got a chest down here that has 418 ammunition in it that's not very many now I have put in the inserters that allow it to be passed all the way up to all of the guns um, so they are all loaded and ready and armed the problem is that 418 probably not going to last as long as I'd like it to but there's no realist there's no sensible way to get more ammunition out here because anything I did do would require large quantities of copper and all of the copper that's being produced here is needed for the delivery cannon capsules and I can't spare I can't spare it in the quantities that would be required to make the ammunition over here and also the ammunition is fairly complicated to make if we look at me um meteor defense ammo that's this one it requires batteries electronic circuits and steel plates batteries are fairly complicated iron steel and sulfuric acid because sulfuric acid part not so not really a problem but the copper in here definitely is um we need electronic circuits more copper and stone stone's fine but copper is a problem and we need steel plates which is um more basically more iron which that's less of a problem because we do have a decent supply of iron stockpiled in here i don't know whether that's going up or down um i should probably keep an eye on it but i think it's probably okay uh, but yeah, we're going to, we would need a lot. You need a lot of copper, and you get through this ammunition fairly quickly as well. So we'd have to be producing quite a lot of it. So yes, this system is eventually going to run out, and then we're going to start getting um, meteorites hitting this base. So that's upsetting, but it's kind of a problem for future Lawrence. I think we're going to have to um, have to find it, come up with a way of bringing out the ammunition in in suitable quantities. Hopefully, we'll be able, we may, maybe we'll send out a rocket or something with a blue chest to replace that one. Send out a rocket with a load of ammunition in it, um, and then the system will just work for a while until we have spaceships that can come in and take the vulcanite away and drop off some um, 
and drop off some ammunition at the same time because doing that doing that sort of thing with when you have spaceships to doing the doing the runs it's a lot easier to uh, to drop off and pick, pick up at the same time whereas delivery cannons are and actually and rockets as well to be honest are very much a one-way system you can only send send stuff away with them I fueled up the oil train because that was a thing that really needed to be done. This train ran out of uh, oil partway through one of, my, one of the last videos. And I've done that by peeling off a little bit of the, um, the petroleum gas that's being made over here in order to make the sulphur that's required in huge quantities for the vulcanite processing. Um, oh, it's interesting. It's a little bit, bit backed up there. Um, oh, presumably that's because we're currently in a... Yes, we're, doing in a, we're producing the vulcanite rather than enriching at the moment. So we're not using sulphur quite as much. Now we are. And there we go. It's gone already. So, yes, that oil is being produced here, and we're turning a little bit of that into solid fuel, and that's going to be enough to keep the train going. We've, at the moment, we've got still got a bit of coal in there that we can burn through fairly quickly, and then we'll move over to an event and some rocket fuel as well, which is slightly wasteful, but I ch obviously chucked that in there because I didn't have the solid fuel at the time, and I wanted to make sure it would keep going. But in the future, this will be kept going by the, um, by the solid fuel. So we've got loads of stuff up there. That's fine. And oh, and I, I put in some more boilers down here to produce the steam for the umbrella defence. These are all now, well, that one's basically full. Yeah, they're all now basically full. So we now have enough power here to, to, to power the umbrella defence. And interestingly, I found out if you pull up lots... I had the problem last time where the umbrella defence was by priority taking its power from this network instead of this network, which is a bit annoying. And just by pulling things up and putting stuff down again, it managed to give... Oh, no, no, it was by pull, pulling the pylons up and putting them back down didn't help because it was still trying to pull from this network. But when I joined, connected the networks by putting a pylon between them and then disconnected them again, then it flicked it over to starting to use this one, which is rather nice. So it's getting blown up. Hmm, Norvis is getting attacked. Let's have a quick look at that. I think this is probably going to be a mark problem. Um... Which is going to be his problem later. But yes, there is a there's a spitter there that was just in range of the um, the warning walls. And so this is what I was talking about ooh, probably a month or two ago at this rate. Um, these things are um, are warning walls where you'll get an alert like that when they get attacked. So the, the biters can't get through, but you get notified that something unfortunate is happening. Like your radars are getting chewed on, your turrets are getting attacked. All of this stuff is getting a, a little bit, picking up a little bit of damage. So does that mean the pollution is starting to... No, there's no pollution down this way. That must just be biters doing a bit of exploratory expansion and they spotted a radar and they got upset by it. So they came up to sort of to nibble on things a bit. Okay, so I think, um, well, I'll, I'll touch on this in, in tomorrow's video because this, this is very much a mark thing at the moment. Uh, so yes, it turns out that if you join the power networks together and then cut them apart again, it forces Factorio to reevaluate what's connected to what and by what priority. And it's clearly decided that this massive network was the, was the higher priority over this tiny one that's only got like 20 things on it, uh, 20 power things on it. A 15 power thing, so it's, um, and therefore it's powering the umbrella off the main one, which is rather nice. But this now should mean that we're still connected to this one through, yes, through this um, substation here, and that means when we do get a uh, coronal mass ejection hitting this planet, we'll use the standard steam batteries and massive quantity of turbines to power it and keep this happy and keep and keep the, keep the yes, umbrella powered and make sure everything gets is protected properly. So that'll be rather nice. Oh yes, somebody in the um, in the comments told me that you can turn uh, raw rare metals down into um, into sand, which I could then turn into glass and ship out that way. And that was when I thought I had a shortage of it. It turns out I don't actually have a shortage of it. Um, is this belt? I think this belt is probably filling up gra gradually, although it's kind of hard to tell. Um, it turns out I do actually have a use for it, so I haven't been I haven't been doing that. Um, but it also turns out that you can't do that. That doesn't doesn't appear to be a thing. You can't turn the raw rare metals into um, in, 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 into into glass. You can send them send them away by delivery cannon, but you don't seem to. They don't seem to be a way to turn them into sand, unless unless I suppose it, unless it's the rare metals themselves that you can turn into sand. No, maybe I mis maybe I misunderstood what 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 they what they said, and it, it was it was something completely different that you're able to do. But it seems like you can't you can't just turn rare metals into sand. That which which I'm kind of glad of because it wouldn't have made any sense from a sort of a, a logical point of view. So I'm kind of glad that they were they were wrong about that, or or perhaps that I misunderstood. Either way. <laughs> Right, I think that's pretty much everything I've been up to in the last stream. Um, I hope you've, I know I've rambled on a little bit, but I hope you found it interesting. I'm, I'm sure you have since you're still here, so uh, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel while you're at it. And now let's have a quick look at what Tristan's been doing. So his big push recently, as we've been talking about, has been out here on Drakit, where he's been getting the uh, the cryonite up and flowing. And as you can see, this is now being shipped out by the uh, by the delivery cannons in much the same way that the um, the Vulcanite was from my planet. So he's got very much very much the same setup going on, but with slightly different processing steps required because you know he's doing a different product. 
He's also got the raw emersite coming through here to another delivery cannon. And I believe, yes, this one will fire out at Taishikuten if I ever start to run a bit low. And that's probably not going to happen for a very, very long time. Um, but you never know. We'll, we'll leave that there because we'll leave that there just in case and it's somewhere where it can be sent if necessary and he's got one here that presumably oh he's fire, will fire at Norvis as and when we actually require some down there so I think he's I think but I don't think he's been doing all that much on here because he had it basically finished at the end of the last um, the last video he has put in a buffer here which is um, <laughs> a little bit well I mean Yes, okay, it's it's a buffer. So by priority, the, yeah, by priority the crown will go out this way. If there's spare, it'll get put into the warehouse, and it'll come out of the warehouse and be it'll use what's in the warehouse by choice as well. So yeah, okay, that's a, it's a, it's an interesting design and the sort of thing that looks very very strange to me because I'm still not completely used to having loaders, but. I mean, yes, this will work. This will this will mean essentially, like there's a, there's a an extra 500 um, stacks worth of belt in here for this to flow back and forth around as it goes in and out. So yeah, that's that looks like a good way of doing it to me. He's also for his delivery cannon. No, not delivery cannon. His um, meteorite defense ammunition. He's put in a apparently put in a rocket landing pad to allow it to be supplied by rocket. Where is it? Ah, up here. Right. So okay, right. We've got a massive long belt coming up here that's going to take. So if, if when a um, when a rocket lands here, we can. It actually takes. This is, mm, I'm not sure. This, I don't see what he's done here. So, this will take the delivery can. Any delivery can. No, any um, meteorite defense ammo will go. Oh, we'll go out that way. At the moment, he's. Oh, at the moment, he's trying to unload it into this warehouse. Oh no, no, these are these are blacklisting. Right. Okay. So everything except delivery cannon ammo. No. Everything except meteorite defense cannon ammo will go into this warehouse, and the defense meteorite defense ammo will go up here along the belt up here in, in, into the gun so I mean that's <clears throat> that's slightly better than mine because at least he's, he's thought about it um, but there's only but and he's got 600 ammo left but still it involves launching rockets over here which isn't ideal so he's in more or less the same position as me where things aren't are a little bit awkward and we're not quite sure what the best way to uh, to get stuff out here is yet but his big push recently has been down on Norvis where he set up this gargantuan um, belt factory system so this is essentially he started off but we, we had we had a belt a belt building system up at the other end of the bus for quite a long time <clears throat> i don't know if it's even still if it's still here or if it's been removed no i think it was in it looks like it's been removed which makes sense i think it was it was sort of crammed into a gap here or somewhere somewhere like this and it was making up it was making the the uh, the basic belts and i think the red ones as well and but not the blue ones so now all the way down at the other end We've got a system here. So what's what's going on here? We're making right. So we've got two machines making the uh, making yellow belts going into into chests, to make, and then they can be taken up to make red belts, up to make blue belts, and then potentially eventually those can be taken up to make the next uh, the next tier of belts and the next tier of belts, which are probably going to be green and purple or something like that. So yes, these get these these will flow through up there, being made into better and better ones. And I presume yes, the idea is that we're um, keeping the trying to keep all of this stuff balanced. So we've got got a, we've got a, a quantity of all of the belts available. So down here, these these inserters won't run unless there's at least a hundred yellow belts in the storage system. Um, and then these won't run unless there's at least um, sorry these won't run unless there's at least a hundred red belts. And these won't run if there's more than if there's no they'll only run if there's less than a thousand so all of this should make sure that all of the belts are being produced in sensible numbers but not excessive numbers so we'll always have between uh, we'll, we'll never have more than a thousand in here um, because the, that's when these will stop and then these will stop if there's less than a hundred in there so we always in theory have a few yellow belts available we've also got what I goodness knows what's going on oh I see so he's got He's got systems here to keep these balanced. So, <laughs> if there's um, if there's too many in this one compared to this one, then the inserter will pass them across. If there's too many in this one compared to this one, then they'll be outputted around here, go around the belt here, and go back in on this side, which is a bit of a, a weird system. But I suppose it will keep it kind of balanced. But at the moment, we've got I don't know. These seem to be uh, yeah. He's done he's done some weird stuff here that's probably intended to keep it all right at with sensible levels of everything. Then we've got. Um, we're making uh, y yellow belts to make undergrounds, which, and we're making red belts to make different reds. Oh, interesting. Red undergrounds require um, yellow undergrounds and red belts. So, yeah, that's why there's this sort of square system going on here. And then the same up here for making the blue ones and, and so on and so on for the future ones. Uh, same with splitters over here. So yellow to yellow splitters, red and red splitters, passing them all up that way. And the same again and again with the, uh, with the loaders. So now 
we have a supply of all of every, everything up to blue, and we're trying to build up to have a thousand blue blue belts in each uh, in, in total, and also have the undergrounds and, and so on and so on. So that's this system. Over on the left hand side here he's making an enormous number of cogs because you need loads of those to make all of the uh, to make some of the more advanced belt stuff. He's got some spaghetti bringing in all of the different resources you need for all of the different belt types and belt things. And then finally he's got this weird belt coming around here. And the idea of this one is I think it's something to do with just dumping any you can dump absolutely any belt thing on it and it'll just go round and round and round and round and eventually be loaded into the appropriate chest by one of these inserters. I'm not sure what the point of that is, um, but it's there and it's a thing, so um, yes. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't, I, I don't really know why he's got that, but it is potentially, it is, um, maybe, maybe it was useful while it was being built, but at the moment it seems like a bit, it seems like a bit of an oddity. So hopefully he'll tell us in the comments why, why he's got this belt for passing them out again, um, rather than just dumping stuff into the logistics network and having the bots automatically bring it out and put it in these chests. I'm also a bit curious as to why, uh, no, why these chests down here are limited, why we haven't just got this dumping all of them in, into, the, into the first chest and having it keep them balanced. Uh, again, he's probably got a good reason for that and he'll let us know in the comments. <laughs> We have a new uh, refueling train for the smeltery up here. So you remember in the last video, the um, one of the trains, one of the uh, or, or, uh, one of the iron ore trains ran out of uh, ran out of fuel. So Tristan's come along. He shoved in an extra station here. That's bringing the fuel up and pumping it into all of the trains. So the trains should now all work nicely as as trains should. We, do we have a bit of an imbalance here? 24, 24, 24, 25. No, we don't. We don't. We just don't have any sort of limit set on this. Or at least if we do, it's set wrongly. Um, let's have a quick look at this. So, we are seeing 100,000 um, iron ore, which is what you'd expect. Uh, we're subtracting... And we're turning that. We're, we're negating that. Then here we've got 32,000 iron ore, which we're adding on. Here we're dividing iron ore by 8,000. What, what are we getting on the input? Seven, minus 70. So we're getting a minus 8 out, and that's coming up here. Ah, we are not setting a train limit here, so that should set the train limit to L, and that will stop all of these excess trains being called in to come to come along here. Because this is a bit... This this is not how it's supposed to go. The trains should not be sat here like this, waiting and just gradually unloading into the station. They should, um, they should be being called when they're needed, not just all of the time. So I assume that wasn't deliberate, um, but we'll, we'll talk about that, and we can fix that in the next, in the next video, if, in the next uh, stream if necessary. Um, he's also bumped up some requests to make uh, in, in, on the space station to make sure the rocket keeps flying because we're running out of some of the, some of the resources. Uh, so this rocket here, make sure this keeps keeps getting filled up and has lots of stuff in it, and make sure make make sure that it flies whenever we whenever we run start to run low on ab anything at all. So probably we ran out of steel or one of the science packs up there or something like that, and they weren't being taken up. And he's done some balancing in Battery Town as well with the output stations. Let's see if we can find that Battery Town. I think is up here somewhere. Yes, here we go. Battery. Um, I'm not quite sure what was going wrong here. Uh, oh, possibly these outputs weren't... Some, somehow this, this station had got out of balance, so he's now fixed that. There's 6,000 in each each of these. Yes, yeah, so I think it's these out... Maybe these inputs up here weren't pulling it in, in evenly enough. Um... And therefore he needs to put out. Therefore he's put. He's put in the system here. Right. This is what the way this system works is. It looks at the amount of the amount of copper in the entire system, um, and then divides it by four. So it gets the average the average amount of copper in 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 any of these warehouses, and then it will run a belt if this if that if the warehouse associated with that belt has less than the average. Uh, sorry, has more than the average. So this one, as you can see, it's, it's uh, we've got I coming out as the um, as the um, uh, as the average amount of copper across the, across all the warehouses, then here we have this this one saying if the amount of copper in that warehouse, because you, you'll see that's linked directly by the green cable, is greater than or equal to I, then it will output. So if they've got equal to or greater than the average amount of copper, then they'll run. The copper will go out, and that basically ensures that they will always stay with the um, they'll always stay in balance. So you, so you won't have that you won't have a problem with all of the copper ending up in the, in the front warehouse and that and that causing causing issues when a train comes on along to unload um, and causes it could cause issues with throughput as well especially if we ever get any iron here and I don't know why we're not getting any iron here given that we have that massive new smeltery area but who knows we'll, we'll have a look into that as well 
So that's everything I've got for you today. Please come back tomorrow where we should be talking about what um, Mark and Mike have been up to. And uh, also please check out the channel sponsor. That's trefoil.be. If you go to, if you use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout, you'll get 20% off your first month of services with them. Um, and they'll host your Factorio servers, your Minecraft servers, your Mindustry servers, whatever, whatever you're playing. Um, and keep all of that up, up and running for you and, and, and keep it running nice and smoothly. Um, if you're interested in joining in the conversations about this, please come along to the Discord. We have... Um, Lots and lots of Factorio related discussion going on there, and some of the other, and other stuff related to the channel, and also not so related to the channel. Uh, it's a it's a nice sized community at the moment, so uh, yeah, I'd say come along and, and, and join in the fun there if you if you want. Uh, we've also got a. Um, a multiplayer map for uh, any any supporters of the channel. So if you're a supporter, you can come along to the Discord and um, join it, join in on in, in basically an identical world. They haven't got quite as far as we have at the moment. There's um, just the uh, just sort of they've discovered electricity and they're still playing around in this little area around the spaceship, the crash spaceship. Um, but basically, it's it's running in a very very uh, it's running in the same world with the same mods and all sorts of stuff. So if you want to sort of join in and see how you do it with with, uh, with a bunch of other people, then please come along and join in with that. I'll be making a video of that of um, of their progress at some point in, in the end. Uh, not too distant future as well. Uh, right, so that's pretty much everything. Please come back tomorrow for to see the other half of this video, and the day after for the Dyson Sphere program update. And on Monday, when we'll be doing doing the uh, doing some more playing through and getting getting a bit further, solving all the problems I've been talking about, and then trying to get on with the next step. And I think for me, the next step is going to be production science. And this video is quite long enough already, so I'm not going to talk about that now, as you'd be very relieved to hear. So as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.